Hello and welcome to part 2 of this Blender 2.73 developer sneak peek series. My name is Thomas Beck and I hope that you can see and learn many useful features for your daily Blender work here. We're covering in this episode improvements in the movie clip editor, the graph editor, the user interface and some modeling tools, so there's a lot to cover. If you like to read more from me, and you can speak German, then show me your support by buying my comprehensive Blender book from Galileo Press or Amazon, you'll find the link in the description. But now let's start with the first minor feature. So let's right jump into the movie clip editor under the motion tracking layout. And as you can see, we've got a new layout, a slightly new layout up there. There's a new 3D view ed editor up there. And that's uh, important because most of the time when you solve a track, then you'd like to align the planes, the, uh, to align the, the, um, the scene. And you always had to switch between right and left by uh, holding control and right or holding control and left. And now it's possible to do it just in the motion clip, uh, in the movie clip editor and with the new full screen mode that you, that I show you later by hitting alt and F10, um, it's much easier to align it now. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that Blender, and I have to switch the uh, Blender now, that Blender is in the current version f with the Affine Tracker 20 times or more than 20 times faster than the old one when you have a big search radius. So for example, when we'd like to track this shot, and we'd like to track this point with this uh, search radius, or for example this one, then you'll see that it's really fast by hitting Ctrl T. And that's um, that was approximately one second or so. And when you try to solve that, uh, to, to track that in the old Prender, in the 2.72 version, then you would most of the time have values about 10 seconds or 20 seconds. So it's really a big leap forward for the uh, Blender Tracker. And it's called predictive tracking, like in Minority Report with the uh, Precops. So um, that's it for the motion uh, and movie clip editor. And now let's go to the next feature. The graph editor was pimped up to make the transition from the 3D to the graph editor a bit more uh, immersive. Um, I prepared a simple scene with a cube uh, flying from left to right, rotating and then resetting. And you see that the graphs are already getting in our way. We don't see the, the right points. We have to click through them to see the graphs better. And when you like to concentrate on one graph, then you would surely hide all others and you would do that normally by clicking on them and click and drag them like I do, I do it here. That is pretty easy and pretty cool. But you would, if you would like to see only this one, you would hide them all one after another and then you have this left. But with the new options, we now have the possibility to select one curve, then hit H and it gets hidden. Alt H is um, showing them up again. And if you'd like to select everything except this curve and hide it, then you would just hit Shift H. And those uh, keystrokes are pretty similar to those H and Alt H strokes that you have got in the 3D view. So this is a very welcomed addition by Joshua. Let's now come to the UI section. In the UI section there are several uh, new features. The first one is the new full screen mode. It is initiated by hitting Alt and F11, uh, F10, sorry. And as you can see, it's going completely full screen. You, you've got no header, no footer and nothing else. And there you can concentrate on modeling, on looking at your materials, on sculpting or whatever you'd like to have. And when you are done, then a simple um, Alt and F10 is leaving it again or you are moving your mouse to the right 
corner and you see that there is a button, a button uh, an icon appearing here. And if you click on that, then it leaves this mode also. Apart from that, it's now possible to have to enter Chinese characters into those text buttons with an IME, an input method editor. Um, that's especially important for Chinese people. I don't speak Chinese, I don't use IME, but I know that it's very important for them, so I'm mention it, mentioning it here. It's now possible to enter Chinese characters there. Another feature or change, for um, be better said, is the uh, P button for starting the game engine. When you're in your Blender game engine, then hitting P will start your game or uh, setting up your game. When you are in the Blender renderer and the Cycles renderer, previously, and you was uh, you were hitting P, then you started the game engine as well. And that was convenient and cool for all of you that were developing games with Blender. But for all uh, starters, beginners, and for um, often oftentimes for intermediates too, it was really annoying to just have one button pressed and you are in your game state and you have to uh, press escape to exit it again. So we changed this behavior in the Blender game when you uh, uh, did select Blender game here in the engine. Um, a combo box, then you can hit P as you have before, but when you are in the Blender renderer or in the Cycles renderer, then hitting P like now or like now is doing just nothing. And I think that is pretty convenient for all you game engine users too. Apart from that, there's a new theme and trunk. If you like to follow me to the uh, themes now and then go to presets and take a look at the, how is it called, flatty light theme, then you'll see that it's pretty similar to what uh, Pablo Vasquez was showing uh, multiple times when he set it up Blender and, and made, made screenshots, except that this uh, bluish color is more pinkish. On, on his screen and it may be that this one will develop into a standard theme for Blender in the future but just as you know, uh, that you know it we got the Flatty Light team theme now in Trunk and you can check it out and try it out. Another really cool feature in the UI section is the Confirm Pi menu threshold. It's located under, Blender, under the Blender user inter preferences and it's there, confirm threshold. Let us just set it to zero to see what a Pi normally does. If you hold down tab, then a Pi is born. And if you'd like to select one, then you would either click on it or just let tab go. And it's been selected. The same would be true for all other Pi's like the Q Pi where you got a more Pi that is important. I come to that back later. Um, where you select the more and then the perspective, local, view all and so on. With the new uh, confirm pi threshold, let's just activate that to, for example, let's say 100 pixels and then close it and use the Q menu again, where you can select your view then you can see that I, um, or actually you can't see, but I, you have to uh, believe me when I tell you that when I'm holding down Q and I won't let Q go now um, and I'm dragging into the direction of more, then this more um, menu item is automatically selected. And when I'm dragging into perspective and auto, then you see that this is selected and my Q key is still holding. The big benefit for your workflow is now that you only have to remember how you drag your mouse to um, execute a, a different, uh, a specific item in your Pi menu. So for example, when I'm doing a switching between perspective and auto view, then I'm just holding down Q and do this 
I'm moving my mouse to this and then I'm moving my mouse to this position and when you'd like to see that in fast and would look like this and it's perspective mode and when I'd like to have uh, the auto mode then I would do the same again and it is an auto mode so um, I know that this feature is maybe a bit spacey but it is so useful and if you'd uh, like to use pie menus then I would definitely recommend that you set this feature it's really awesome and it will improve your workflow a lot and speed up your work workflow a lot so this was it for the UI I think let's now go to the modeling section where we where we were um, introducing many new features and um, some bug fixing but I will concentrate on the features and the first one is the knife tool so let's now look at the knife tool the knife tool has a new mode the freehand mode and when you when we go into the edit mode of our poor Suzanne then we'd like to cut her body with the previous knife tool it was like clicking here and clicking here and clicking here and clicking here and there and there and there and there and finally clicking there and hitting enter and you've got a fine loop cut but what if you'd like to have it without so many clicks then you need the new blender hold down k and start from wherever you like to and drag your mouse without even clicking just drag it and drag it and drag it and if you'd like to have the loop closed then just double click and it's closed and if you hit enter then it will cut so it's very easy and convenient another feature that I'd like to show you or more more or less a uh, change in behavior that I'd like to show you is located in the edit mode for this example I just use a simple cube and I select the uh, top, uh, upper part of this cube by selecting four vertices and then I do uh, shrink or fatten via Alt S when I do that now and you see that this behavior is not changed and, and didn't change from previous versions blender versions it's uh, scaling it up and moving along the um, normal of the face at the same time but when you have a, a model that is more complex than this cube even if this is extremely complex but there are models that are more complex than this cube and they, those have faces that are for example rotated and you are working in the face mode then we have a change in behavior because in the face mode then and and when we are enabling shrink and fatten then then it's going along the normals of this face and not uh, scaling it up again like um, we've seen it with the vertices so when you are in the face selection mode then remember it's shrink shrink and fatten is working along the face normal the next feature is affecting a goldie an oldie but goldie in blender it's the select more and select less tool in the edit mode so just switch to the edit mode and I don't know if you know it but you will uh, enable it by holding control and hitting plus or minus minus on your numpad so normally in previous versions when you hit when you've hit pl a control and plus then you have always those selection patterns it's increasing the selection and it's decreasing by hitting minus now you've got a new option and this option is shown here face step and let me just use the selection that we had here before and if, we, if we enable face step now then you see that when I select this and hit control and plus then it's always squared my selection will be squared and the next control plus will select a squared patch too so this is very convenient and very useful if you'd like to have uh, squared selections um, depending on your initial selection 
let's now take a look at selecting uh, similar phase regions. For this we insert a simple UV sphere and insert some faces like those insets and copy the whole sphere to different positions and then we'll have a look at our new tool. So when you select this region now, I select this via uh, control and plus, select more, um, then you would like to have this region selected on this sphere and on this sphere. It's the same object, we are in edit mode, so it should be possible and it is with a new feature that is introduced in Blender 2.73 and this is uh, f uh, to find this you can find that in shift G select similar and then face regions and uh, the description says all select similar faces face regions to the current selection and with, if we uh, click on that then you'll see every region that is the same in our mesh and in all other mesh objects in our current mesh uh, in our current object um, are selected and this is very convenient and very helpful when you've got fingers for example or uh, toes or something like that it's really helpful and you should make use of it even if it's a bit hidden the next feature can be found in the bevel modifier therefore i added a simple cube here with eight vertices and apply or add a bevel modifier now and when you see this bevel modifier is working now on the edges, but we'd like to have it working on the vertices. So we activate only vertices here. And we'd like to have it working on the weights of the vertices. So just as you can see now, there is no beveling now. But when you have this bevel weight value increased, then you'll see that only this edge is beveled. And that's exactly the new feature. Previously, it was not possible to uh, use the bevel weight on vertices, but now it is. Last but absolutely not least is the proportional editing now available for the individual origins. So you can uh, see on this awesomely spectacular model that I prepared for you that you can, can uh, rotate, for example, this model and those uh, those individual origins are working as expected this wasn't possible in Blender before the individual origins weren't comp compatible with the um, with the O tool the proportional editing tool and now they are this was the complete Blender development sneak peek I hope that you had much fun as much fun as I had making it Next time, when we will be in part three of this development sneak peek, we'll have a look at the texture painting improvements, the sequencer improvements and the freestyle renderer improvements. So there's much to cover. Subscribe and we'll see us next time. Happy blending!